Sometimes I like to get in front of people and scare myself <laughs> and have a bit of an um, and, and, and recite a bit of poetry. So this one in particular is called A Woman's Place. Okay, I often think about what our predecessors would think of where we are now. The women who bled and screamed and shed and died to, for our right to live, to vote, to write, to quote ourselves and our creations, to rise beyond the stations prescribed by those who refuse to acknowledge our shine. The women who paved the way for choice, who stood in a room full of hostility with a womb full of strength and denounced this impingement on our humanity for what it was. The women who fought for representation, who coined the phrase intersectionality, who realised my skin doesn't always make us kin. The women whose life is shaped in crossroads of complexity, who refused to be complicit in a diluted feminist ecstasy. The women who knew we can only be united on both of our terms, who learned that the hard way, that the same fire gives different burns. Those women who made me, raised and framed me, to be able to stand in a space such as this and revel in just being. Who removed the stigma and shame and taboos associated with blood and pleasure, who allowed me to roar, to slay at my leisure. Who made hitting and running like a girl something I think everyone should aspire to. <laughs> What would they do or think if they could see we're women and girls and what we've got going on face on a day-to-day -day basis? There's 11 women breaked an hour in the United Kingdom alone. Of which of these one in 10 have reported? And which of these only one in 10 are actually convicted? I don't think it's quite the picture our four sisters predicted. Two women are killed a week by a current or ex-partner. Their names and faces more than just numbers. They laughed and they felt and they loved and they lived. They were stolen from us. They had so much to give. Despite this, 34 women's refuges have been shut since 2011. Over 80% of austerity measures fall on the shoulders of women. See the disparity here? To me, it seems that this government has made their allegiances clear. I'm often told I should be proud to have a woman as a prime minister. Just because she is a woman does not mean she is for women. Is sinister. We have a rape clause hand in hand with rape culture, modestly pitfalls preying on women like vultures. She leads a government intent on getting in bed with the DUP, who would refuse a woman body autonomy, who frame love in terms of body parts, who don't understand we connect with our hearts. Keep your rosaries off my ovaries, my uterus is not for you. <laughs> love transcends your definition. Love is love, love is true. Now I'm not a politician, so I'm not going to stand here and try and dictate to the government about what politicians should do. That would be like the government trying to dictate to me, a woman, what I should do with my body. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You know, sometimes I feel so strong, like tonight in front of you all, fearless even, but sometimes I'm so tired. I'm so terribly tired and a sigh and, and a pretense is all I can muster. But not tonight. Woo! I didn't think the right to control your own vessel was that revolutionary, if I'm honest. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still possessed in this shit. <laughs> but I refuse to be silent. I refuse to be under duress. Let's get one thing clear. They aren't pro-life, they are pro-birth. This brigade are only for the unborn. Women are life givers and havers too, I could have sworn. So why don't they concerns about life stretch to them? Why are the decisions about our bodies impacted by so many old men? <laughs> it's control under the guise of concern. Why won't they see? Why won't they learn? When control is used as a tool, when violence is gendered, this is not the bright future my idols recommended. We've made strides, we've made leaps, we've made light years forward. I don't want us to forget that, but I will not settle for this measure of progress. I will not be content with our bodies for less. I will be forever thankful to those that have dreamed before, but I'm sure they would agree that it's still our time to claim the floor. Protest the Tories, protest the DUP, fight the coalition of chaos, display it for all to see. Keep it loud and personify persistence. A woman's place is in the resistance. Thank you. <laughs> Shout for Natalie Daddy, people, thank you. Always so
so powerful and poignant and beautiful and still funny and I think that's how we need to try and get our messages across because they get drowned out otherwise. Um, I'm going to invite Rachel O'Bear and she's a local councillor, she's one of my best mates and she's absolutely brilliant. She's going to speak to you all now. Okay, if you're watching on YouTube, we're having separate videos, so go to the next one today.